This is English shorthand dictation number 227 and the dictation speed is 160 words per minute. Ready? Start. Honorable Chairman Sir, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on this bill. I do not think I fall in the category of the great speakers who spoke before me because they are all lawyers. The major contention here is whether the additional benefits mentioned in this bill will apply from the first day on the completion of the 80th year. I think most of the members understand why this bill is being brought by the government. There was confusion because additional quantum of pensions and family pensions were given to the judges after their retirement. I think the government has made a right choice because there is confusion between the two judgments which are contradicting each other. One judgment said that on the completion of 79th year you should start it. Another judgment said that it should start at the beginning of the 80th year. The government has come forward to iron out the differences and make it clear by saying that the first month after completing the year will be considered. It is the duty of the state to ensure that a retired judge who has given so many years of service to the country is adequately looked after. I am glad that the government is doing the right thing. However, there are certain questions which arise in my mind. As I said, I am not an advocate, but as a common man, I am asking this. The ruling party's member has made such a long speech. My honorable friend spoke about the carrot and stick theory being worked here. The government is ready to accept the demand of the judges. At the same time, he spoke so much about the appointment of judges, the way the law minister is deprived and the way the law minister does not have any power in the appointment of judges. In fact, he went on to say that in the United States, the Supreme Court judges are appointed by the president. Was he hinting that a similar system is soon going to be in place in India? Is it a prelude to that? What the government is trying to do is that it is indirectly threatening the present judiciary system through us. It creates a doubt in my mind. I am sure that you will answer this. Are you planning to bring a bill? If you are going to bring a bill, please do that. You are the most powerful party here. In the last seven and a half years, you have done whatever you wanted to do. And the opposition is a mere spectator because you have been dominating us. Do you have the courage to dominate the judiciary? I very much doubt it. There is already a lot of suspicion in the minds of the people. I am speaking like a common man that you are influencing the judiciary. Please do not intervene and unnecessarily rock the judicial system in which people believe. There is an objection that there has been a differentiation between the retirement age of judges of the high courts and the Supreme Court. A high court judge has to retire at 62 years of age, but if he is elevated to the Supreme Court, he can stay up to 65 years of age. Why can you not have a uniformity? You should do that. Please bring a law in this regard instead of threatening the judges through your colleagues. All judges should have the retirement age of 65 years. If you want to make it 67 years, please do it. We will welcome it. In the parliament, we will be happy to do that. There has always been a long-standing demand from the advocates and also from the state governments for a permanent regional bench in the southern region. This has been the demand from my party for a very long time. Geographically, every lawyer situated in Delhi has got an access to the Supreme Court, whereas lawyers who are born in other corners of the country do not get a chance. This is not equality. 
if i am a litigant i have to employ a lawyer far away from the region where i reside there has been a demand from all the parties that there is no social diversity in the appointment of judges there is also no equal representation of women in the appointment of judges there is not even a single person from the scheduled tribe community who has been appointed as a supreme court judge only five people are there from the scheduled caste community as supreme court judges i am not trying to go against any community but only one community seems to be dominating the whole judicial system in the entire country this has to change i am not asking for social justice but this has to change everyone should feel that they are part of the system while we have the utmost faith in our judicial system the recent happenings have created a lot of suspicion there should be a cooling off period judgments come in favor of the governments and then we find that those judges are elevated one of them was demoted as a governor another one was demoted as a rajya sabha member in both the cases it is the former chief justices who have been demoted what does it mean a common man will feel that something dubious is going on an act of any justice department or the government should be pure or should look pure to the common man today you have brought this bill i want to ask whether the two former chief justices of india whom i mentioned here will be getting the judges pension or will they be getting the governor's pension or the rajya sabha pension you should bring a clarity about it independence of judiciary is indispensable in a democratic system of governance the general contention is that in any democratic country the judicial system should be completely free from any sort of pressure or pull both internal and external it may so happen that the government might abuse the political power that has been conferred upon it an independent judiciary is required to maintain the balance between the interests of individuals and society all laws in india derive their authority from the constitution of india all powers of the state and its organs are contained in it and must be exercised within the limits set out by the constitution which specifically directs the state to separate the judiciary from the executive in the public service the judiciary has a single pyramidal structure with the lower courts at the bottom high courts in the middle and the supreme court at the top today our justice delivery system is facing multiple challenges two of them are stark and need immediate attention namely appointment of judges and managing the humongous number of pending cases on behalf of my party i have a few suggestions to make many issues are mentioned by honorable members regarding collegium and pending cases at all levels in courts i will not touch those points but as a representative of the people as a woman and as a lawyer i will make some suggestions there is under representation of women in higher judiciary currently the supreme court has just four women judges whereas the high courts have 81 women judges five high courts have no women judges at all overall the representation of women in the supreme court and the high courts is just 9% and 11% respectively given the fact that women constitute 50% of our population there is a need to provide women with equal representation in the benches of our judiciary sir as regards providing recognition to weaker sections and minorities in the higher judiciary apart from lack of gender diversity a glare lack of social diversity is also persisting during the period from 1950 to 1990 close to 50% of the judges of the supreme court were from forward castes the total number of scs and sts in the supreme court never crossed 10% in this period the situation has not improved much since then it is shocking to know that since the formation of the supreme court there have been only 5 judges belonging to scheduled castes and only one judge belonging to scheduled tribes the situation is not better even in the high courts i urge upon the government to take necessary steps to promote higher representation of women and minority groups in our higher judiciary by introducing appropriate reservation policy 
आई रिक्वेस्ट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ऑन द नीड फॉर नेशनल जुडिशियल अपॉइंटमेंट कमीशन सेवरल ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स कोटेड मेनी केसेज आई वुड लाइक टू कोट वॉट लेट श्री अरुण जेटली हैड सेड ही सेड दैट डेमोक्रेसी कैन नॉट बी ए टायरेनी ऑफ द अन इलेक्टेड विच मीन्स दैट रिफॉर्म्स आर नीडेड इन द जुडिशरी सो दैट जुडिशियल प्रोसीजर डज नॉट बिकम ए पनिशमेंट दे हैव बीन रिपोर्ट दैट सजेस्ट दैट अराउंड फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द जजेस ऑफ हाई कोर्ट एंड थर्टी थ्री परसेंट जजेस इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट आर फैमिली मेंबर्स ऑफ दोज इन हायर लेवल्स ऑफ द जुडिशरी देयर इज ए स्ट्रॉन्ग नीड टू रिप्लेस द कॉलेजियम सिस्टम विद ए सिस्टम सिमिलर टू द नेशनल जुडिशियल अपॉइंटमेंट कमीशन वेयर बाई मेंबर्स आउटसाइड द जुडिशरी आर ऑल्सो इंक्लूडेड इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ मेकिंग जुडिशियल अपॉइंटमेंट दिस विल एंश्योर ग्रेटर ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड डाइवर्सिटी इन द सिलेक्शन प्रोसेस